The volunteers in all 50 states have asked me to run as a candidate for the President of the United States. Jim Stockdale, our vice presidential candidate, and I are honored to accept their request. He's back. Ross Perot reverses himself, jumps back in, and now it's a three-man race for the White House. Questions in Washington about whether women are getting shortchanged when it comes to breast cancer prevention. And Eye on America, a mother-daughter battle that could affect abortion rights all across the country. This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, Dan Rather reporting. It is now 3 and 33 in the presidential campaign, just 33 days until the election. And Ross Perot says that he's back in now, this time promising to be in all the way. Commercials, debates, campaigning. So suddenly, it's a three-man race, and it could be a very different battle for the White House. That could be good news for the Bush Quail campaign, which trails in every poll. Our coverage begins with Scott Pelley in Dallas. Volunteers in all 50 states have asked me to run as a candidate for President of the United States. Jim Stockdale, our vice presidential candidate, and I are honored to accept their request. After eight months of promising, teasing, and dodging, Ross Perot is in. Neither political party has effectively addressed the issues that concern the American people. They've asked me to run this campaign on the issues and to assure that the problems that the American people are concerned with will be dealt with after this election is over. My decision in July hurt you. I apologize. I thought it was I was doing the right thing. I made a mistake. I take full responsibility for it. Later, answering questions, Perot's legendary irritation with the media surfaced, especially when asked whether he was just trying to spoil the election for President Bush. Wait just a minute. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, I love you guys. But across the nation, his supporters were pleased. Instead of talking about Murphy Brown and spelling bees and how to spell the word potato, we're going to be talking about issues. Many are eager to forget that day two months ago. I will not become a candidate. When he quit, Perot was angry about questions into his background, his family, his attitudes on women, religion, and race. It is absolutely devastating you and your people. He was surprised by a barrage of criticism of an insensitive remark at the NAACP convention. I do not spend my time investigating other people. He was called Inspector Perot for his investigations of everything from a daughter's boyfriend to his own supporters. You can't have uh people run around and investigating people and looking into their backgrounds and using uh, strong arm tactics and, and uh, uh, this just did the American way. Today, Perot responded. We had 50 states, offices all over 50 states, manned by self-selected volunteers. Someone would call Dallas and say, Charlie's stealing money. In order to comply with the Federal Election Commission rules, we had to check it out. Perot will use TV to preach his central message, which is that the budget deficit must be eliminated quickly, and it will take big tax increases and spending cuts to do that. Perot says he will join any future presidential debate, bringing a third and unpredictable element to this remarkable political year. Scott Pelley, CBS News, Dallas. Now for Perot's impact on the Bush campaign and the latest on presidential debates, let's go to correspondent Susan Spencer live at the White House. Susan? Well, Dan, there's no smoke from the chimney yet on the debates. In fact, we're told those talks could go on all night. So much for efforts to wrap things up before Ross Perot got in the race. That news generally is pretty much welcomed here at the White House, which sees it as a way to keep attention off Bill Clinton and to encourage voters not to make up their minds just yet. So unlike last time, Mr. Bush will not be attacking Ross Perot. If anything, he needs for Perot to do well enough to start hurting Bill Clinton. It gets very complicated. But the plan basically is to ignore Perot publicly, court his supporters privately, and stay on the Clinton attack. The president campaigned today from the Rose Garden, unveiling a new policy to increase use of ethanol, one likely to give the president a boost in battleground states he desperately needs. Well, I think this will help the president uh, throughout the Midwest, uh, particularly in Illinois. We're the largest producer of ethanol, but it's true of uh, Missouri, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, wherever they grow corn. 
Meanwhile, the Bush campaign released what the opposition calls the most misleading ad yet. Bill Clinton says he'll only tax the rich to pay for his campaign promises. But here's what Clinton economics could mean to you. $1,088 more in taxes. Applying its own figures to Clinton's plan, the Bush spot says what it could mean, stating specific tax increases as hard fact. $1,191 more in taxes. The ad is similar to one made for John Major's conservatives in Britain when they were down in the polls. The conservatives have talked with the Bush campaign. The ad helped them stay in power. How would you feel about putting in a few extra hours to pay for Labour's promises? But Clinton says the new Bush spot cooks the books to scare people. Everyone who has looked at this Bush claim has said it is false. It is a disgrace to the American people that the President of the United States would make a claim that is so baseless, so without foundation, so shameless in its attempt to get votes under false pretense. The president flirts with danger when he brings up taxes, given his own broken no new taxes pledge. But the Clinton campaign is genuinely worried about this ad. As one source said, what if people actually believe it? Dan? Thanks, Susan. At the White House. Now for the impact on the Clinton-Gore campaign. What's Clinton's reaction and strategy now that Perot's back in? Richard Threlkel has our report on that. All right, I need your help. Bill Clinton campaigned through Wisconsin today, business as usual, and insisted it's going to stay business as usual right to Election Day, Perot or no Perot. I have no control over that. I, you never, I don't worry about things I can't control. I think we're going to win this campaign because I've got the best program with the broadest support from Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and a lot of former Perot supporters. It's the best program for the country's future. And, uh, and I think it's going to prevail because it creates more jobs and increases incomes more than anybody else's program. Until today, in fact, Perot has been a big help to Bill Clinton. Last June, while Perot was a potential candidate, Clinton was running third in the polls. But in July, when Perot dropped out, two-thirds of Perot voters migrated to Clinton, and he's been leading the president in the polls ever since. The question now, with Perot a candidate, will his lead hold up? The Clinton camp doesn't like that uncertainty, nor the prospect that Perot's candidacy will now divert attention from Clinton's economic message. Instead of one candidate preaching change, Clinton, now there will be two. And Clinton does not relish the prospect of sharing whatever presidential debates there are with Perot. Perot's candidacy will probably help Clinton by taking votes away from Mr. Bush in those states the Republicans must win. Texas, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, but Perot may cost Clinton votes in states he needs, like Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and California. And finally, will Perot's candidacy force Clinton and George Bush, for that matter, to get specific about reducing the deficit? Not likely. Politicians have a chronic, pathological, and probably genetic inability to tell people something that might cause them anguish or pain. These two politicians are no, except, no exceptions. The best Clinton can hope for now is that Ross Perot will spend the next month doing what he did last summer, mostly bashing George Bush. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, New York. Ross Perot's on again, off again, unorthodox campaign for president includes an unconventional running mate. He is Admiral James Stockdale, 68 years old, retired admiral and former prisoner of war who stood up to years of brutality in North Vietnam. Correspondent David Martin has more about him. There is no greater war hero and no unlikelier politician than James Bond Stockdale, the ex-Navy pilot who spent seven and a half years as a leader of American POWs in Hanoi. He is a man of steel. He has been hammered on the forge of brutality. I can't tell you how many POWs told me when they came home that they would not be alive if it had not been for Jim Stockdale. Stockdale was awarded the Medal of Honor for bravery not just beyond the call, but beyond comprehension. We were both put in solitary confinement for over four years and uh, isolated in some very uh, arduous uh, conditions and, in, and, and tortured to uh, unconsciousness on a number of occasions. As portrayed in this movie about Stockdale's ordeal, the North Vietnamese were using torture to force the POWs into making anti-war statements before television cameras. He resisted to the point of actually cutting himself up uh, with a uh, razor blade. They just cut his face all to pieces in order to avoid uh, going before those uh, cameras any further. While Stockdale was still in prison, his wife Sybil joined Perot in his crusade to spotlight the plight of American POWs. 
Now, nearly 20 years after his return, Stockdale is returning the favor. I am not heart sick to get into the vice presidential office in Washington. If I can be of help, all he's got to do is ask me. He had retired from the Navy into a life of contemplation and writing, and his friends were surprised to see him enter politics. He has really turned, in many respects, to intellectual pursuits. He is a, a fellow at the Hoover Institute at Stanford University, and I think enjoys his work and is highly respected in it. Stockdale has described his time in prison as the most productive years of his life, after which everything else seemed trivial. He said that before he became a vice presidential candidate, but given what he's been through, it may still be a true statement. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. Still ahead here on tonight's CBS Evening News, the lost message.